Hello and welcome to another Advanced Skeleton video. In this video we're going to take a closer look at the new face setup and for this we'll be using the Max demo character. So to compare the old and new face setup first we're going to bring in both the old and new Max into Maya. And here we have them side by side. On the right side here is the old version of Max. On the left side here is the new version of Max. Now I'll show you how to tell what version of Advanced Skeleton was used to build a particular character rig. To do this, open the Attribute Editor and select the main control curve. And if you have a look down under Extra Attributes, there'll be a attribute called Version. And this shows us that our uh, Old version on the right here was built with version 5.3.1.2, whereas the new version on the left here is 5.4.2.0. Right, so let's have a closer look at the different face setups. Now the first obvious visual difference here is the old version used the uh, NURBS spheres as the on-face controllers, whereas the new version using the NURBS curves, which are more consistent with the uh, body setup. But note, you can customize this by using the tools in the control curves section here. Next, we'll see a difference if we select the geometry and take a look at what nodes are making the face setup. In the old version, there's a variety of deformers and it's uh, layers of deformations that are all brought together by the main uh, blend shape deformer. Whereas the new version is only one skin cluster. So you could say the old version is quite blend shape centric type setup, whereas the new version is more of a joint based setup. However, with the new version, if you still require some fine tuning using shapes, you can use the face setup together with the corrective shapes that you'll find here under the post section. Also in the new version, I'll show you that we have these uh, attributes on the main control box here that controls the visibility of the different categories of controllers. So we got ABC, which corresponds here to the red, green and blue controllers. Whereas the green A controllers controls a broader region, the red B controllers a more narrow region, and the blue C controllers is an even more narrow region. Now, if you want to change the shape or the colors of these controls, you can do that in here with the control curves. So, for example, you could say you want to change all the face C controls for both right and left and set the color to white. Also note that there's an attribute here on the main control box called limits. By default, the joystick controls are limited to stay within their square region here. But whereas if you turn off the limits attribute, the joystick controllers are no longer limited by how far they can move. Now taking a closer look at the uh, joystick controllers here, each one of these will have attributes that controls how much this controller will drive the face controllers. And by altering these values, we get different behaviors as we use the joystick controller. Also on the on-phase controllers, there's a series of attributes here. There are the influence attributes. Now these determine how much of the neighboring on-phase controllers that move along with this controller. So by altering this value, we'll see that we're getting different behavior as we move the controller. Now the on-face controllers here are set up to have opposite orientations that allows you to move them and get the mirrored behavior on the opposite side. Note that you can also work with mirroring by doing posing on only the one side and using the tools to do the mirroring. Now let's take a closer look inside the face section. And for this we'll just go ahead and open the main file. Now what we can do here is hit uh, toggle fit advanced and that shows us what the fitting looks like for this character. Now in the face fit section you'll see that we got all our checkboxes ticked. 
Now these are all the required fitting elements. Note that there are additional optional extra elements. And for the case of Max here, he is actually not using a lot of them since he have quite sparse topology. Now, as you're doing the fitting of your character, you'll have these help images to help you determine the placement for each one of the uh, fitting elements. But note that it can also be quite useful to uh, go ahead and open one of the demo characters and hit Toggle Fit Advanced, and you'll see how the placement has been made on that particular demo character. Now, what we can do here, we can go ahead and delete the entire face setup, and we'll build a new one. Now, there's an option here to keep build post, now to explain what that does, let's go back into the uh, full face setup and take a look at an example where you might want to keep build pops. So for example, you might find that with your character as you don't the face setup, you'll find that as you apply blink, you need to push out the eyelids. So you go to the blink driven attributes and increase this value. Then to store this as the new default value, you can right click here on the face, go to build pose and hit set build pose. A dialog will come up to confirm the exact values and attributes that we want to save as new default. Now in this case, I want to uh, adjust this because I didn't want the new default post to include the actual blink, just the uh, increased value for the auto lid outs. So I'll set that back to zero and again hit set to build post. And yes, I confirm that these are the attributes and values that I want to be the new default. And now we can see that this will be the new default values. So if I, for example, alter them to another value, set them to zero, I hit go to build post, it'll go back to our new stored values. So that is explaining what the keep build post is and why you might want to keep them. Now, before proceeding, I'll show you exactly where these are stored in case you want to reset them or edit them manually. So what we'll do is take a look under group, under face setup, select the face fit skeleton and open that in the attribute editor. And under extra attributes, there'll be a attribute called run. Now, this is the string with the command that we have set. Right, so back to hit toggle fit advanced. Sure, we'll keep the build pose and I'll hit delete advance. So the face setup has now been completely removed. We are however left with our face fit skeleton. So we can build from that. And we can see that in the face fit skeleton under the run attribute, we still have these values. So these will still be applied after building our face setup. And we could go ahead now and hit the build face setup and it will go through all the steps for us. Uh, but for the sake of the demonstration, we'll do the step builder. So First step, prep control box eyeballs. After the eyeball step, you might want to just move the controllers, make sure the eyeballs are all doing the right thing. Eyelid. Again, after this step, you can check that the eyelids are moving and following the eyes and the blink is working as expected. Eyebrows. Now this is just moving the eyebrow area. The actual separate eyebrow objects are not yet affected. There's a separate section for that later on down here. Lip, and we can confirm the lips are working. Next is the lip fall off. We can hit test first. So this is gonna be our fall off area. Before running the fall up, you can see that the deformation only runs on the lip and it doesn't fall off outwards. Now, if we hit test, we'll see the vertex selected for what is gonna be uh, the full of area. Uh, just to show you, we can increase this number, hit test again, you see that will be a much larger area, which is not gonna be appropriate for this character. So we're gonna keep it at uh, two inside, two outside, and hit build. And we can see that the lip deformation now has a fall off. We'll run the jaw. And at this point, we can move and rotate the jaw to exactly how we want it to look like when the mouth opens. Do note that this is a uh, animation of the jaw opening on a timeline. So you wanna make sure you are at frame 30 as you make the adjustments here. We'll go ahead and hit jaw finish. Next, the nose. Smile crease, smile fold. It's not gonna do anything on Max because he's not using those. Cheek. Tongue, regions, aim, eye, upper lower face. Now the upper lower face might have a bit too much of the weight smoothing here since he have really sparse topology. So I'm gonna reduce that to just a value of two. Hit update. Actually, we'll go with one. Yeah, that's looking better. 
and finished. So that's the face built. Now let's look at the remaining sections. We got tweaks. Now in here it's just telling you that uh, to do tweaks, the majority of tweaks you might want to do is to uh, moving the joysticks and adjusting how much the joysticks are influencing the on-face controls. And it's also saying you can change the values in here for the on-face controls, how much each one of them is affecting the neighboring on-face controls. And also the shortcut to painting weights, if you want to do that. And then there's a setup for eyeballs. In here, you just go ahead and select the edge loop that represents uh, the pupil and the iris. And go ahead and hit set up eyeball. And it will give you the attributes to control the size of the pupil. Here's the eyebrow section. We'll now go ahead and select the eyebrow geometry if you have that as a separate geometry. And there's a couple of options here. You can do uh, plain skin weights. That will get the weighting is the same as the underlying skin. Or you can do wrap deform, which will use a wrap deformer, or the wire deform. Which can, in some cases, produce a nicer and more smooth uh, result. Eyelash, for the characters that have that. The delta mush deformer can uh, produce some nice looking results. Uh, so what we're going to do is just create the delta mush that applies it to the whole face. Do note that um, most times when you apply the Delta Mush, if you do things like closing the eyelids, these are likely not to work very well with the Delta Mush. So there's a shortcut here to select the eyelid area and hit zero weight selected for removing the weights of the Delta Mush on this area. We get a better result. The head squash, if you want that applied. And then we have the custom control sections. So if you wanted to add another control for an area of the face, you just go ahead and first uh, make that a soft mode. Just move it and apply an appropriate radius. You can also choose the volume to be a surface of volume as you can with soft mods. Once you're happy with the behavior you get from that soft mod, you can go ahead and create a controller from that soft mod. We'll give it a name. And there's our new controller. Then finally, I'll just quickly show you how to apply corrective shapes to this. So for example, we, if we wanted a corrective shape as we lower the eyebrow here, what we'll do is just use the corrective shape tools that we'll find under the pose section here. Select the mesh we want to affect and hit create corrective shape. And it's firstly confirming what it's going to be using as a driver. And it has detected that the, we moved that controller. So that's correct. Now I'll do some quick exaggerated effect here just to demonstrate. We'll go ahead and hit apply. Now we'll now see that we have that corrective shape applied as we move the controller. And that's been applied on the other side as well. The corrective shape will appear over here as a separate deformer. So you can modify the envelope attribute to see only the effect of that deformer in isolation. And that's it for this time. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.